More than 150 million people have been vaccinated in Indonesia as officials prepare the country to reopen further and live with COVID-19. But there are some who may be left behind. Saiful Bari Ismail finds out how people with disabilities are coping with the health crisis. The Matahati Cafe in Tangerang, Banten province is special. Matahati means eyes from the heart and customers here are served by people with special needs. Barista Hilmi lost his sight 10 years ago, but the 23-year-old was determined to learn how to brew coffee despite his disability. Saya pernah membuat moto hidup saya pantang menyerah. Mau mencoba tanpa menyerah gitu sampai bisa gitu Mas. Sampai bisa sampai benar-benar membuahkan hasil. Apapun yang terjadi nanti ya nggak masalah yang penting kendala yang dihadapi pasti ada hasilnya gitu jadinya. Misalnya kayak saya ketusuk atau kesetrum atau apa. Itu udah pasti tantangan kan, udah pasti rintangan kan yang kita hadapin. Itu semua proses menuju keberhasilan tuh ya seperti itu Mas. Hilmi uses braille characters to identify the different types of coffee and has an alarm to alert him when the brew is ready. He opened at the cafe with the support of his mother last year before the COVID-19 pandemic hit Indonesia. They understand the struggles people with disabilities are facing amid the pandemic and want to do what they can to help by equipping them with new skills. This establishment also wants to promote employment opportunities to other visually handicapped individuals. The cafe trains the visually impaired who are interested to know more about coffee. So far, it has trained 15 such individuals at no cost. More than 6 million people live with moderate and severe disabilities in Indonesia. They have been among the most deeply affected by COVID-19. A survey by the Indonesia Disability Network and its partners showed that about 80% of more than 1,600 respondents, especially those working in the informal sector, have experienced a loss in income. Menurunnya pendapatan akibat kehilangan pekerjaan dan juga sepi gitu ya untuk kegiatan-kegiatan ekonomi mereka itu kemudian membuat teman-teman juga mengurangi asupan makanan bergizinya. Mereka juga mengurangi terapi, mengurangi kebutuhan suplemen, dan kondisi ini tentu berdampak buruk kepada kondisi disabilitasnya. Radi counts herself lucky. She still has a job and her income has remained stable. The 35-year-old bank officer recently got her second dose of COVID-19 vaccine. Even though the pandemic has not impacted Radi financially, she still feels vulnerable because of her dependence on others. Pada saat kita keluar rumah, jika yang memang butuh bantuan dengan teman-teman disabilitas itu kan agak khawatir, agak khawatir terpapar orang yang membantu. Karena pasti saya harus butuh sentuhan dengan orang untuk melakukan aktivitas saya seperti ke toilet. The government has social assistance programs to help vulnerable groups like people with disabilities. In fact, such programs have doubled during the pandemic. These programs include providing accessibility equipment such as wheelchairs to aid them in their movements. However, advocacy groups say there's more to be done. Program perlindungan sosial itu sebetulnya lebih kepada menolong mereka bertahan untuk hidup. Setidaknya mereka tidak mati. Teman-teman ini masih bertahan gitu ya. Karena tadi ada sembako, ada program yang dukungan yang misalnya 600 ribu per bulan, BST. Tapi kemudian untuk hidup lebih baik, itu belum bisa. Untuk kemudian hidup sejahtera, itu jauh sekali. Many people with disabilities have higher living expenses than non-disabled people because they need special equipment or treatment. As the pandemic drags on, more help and attention is needed to ensure this vulnerable group is not left further behind. Saifu Bari Smile, CNA, Banten.